welcome to the next episode of the day ticket series and we've come down to Hollybush Lakes in Surrey this time and uh, finally we managed to pin down the main man himself Mr Martin Locke so yeah very much looking forward to spending the next couple of days with him we're on their day ticket lake it's called their front lake lots of very very nice fish in here and I think they got to about 45 pounds so uh, yeah that would be nice to get the first 40 of the day ticket series wouldn't it but uh, anyway enough of me blabbering on Martin's down the way let's go and see what he's up to and we'll make a plan for the day ahead Oi oi Hello oi, mate, mate. Are you doing all right? Finally pinned you down for the day ticket series. Yeah, when you called me a couple of weeks ago, I thought, oh, you said I've got a lovely little day ticket late for you. So, oh, what sort of cars has he lined up? Somebody's that been like <laughs> finished digging it last week, bivvied up by a JCB. Yeah. Or please, not Operation Stack, where I've got to wait behind a swim for a bivvy to be yeah. and all that. But this is absolutely excellent. What did I say to you? Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't not, take you to a dump hole. No, it was day ticket, but it's not commercial, is it? It's sort of overgrown, lets it, you know, do its own thing. This has got some serious carp in itself. This yeah, place. you always sent those photos over. I saw like the, the surroundings of the lake and that looks nice and, uh, well, it's not just bare and barren. Yeah, no, it's so, a yeah, nice yeah, lake. Looking mid, 40, to it. mid 40, lights off the surface. Yeah. I don't think we're going to quite get surface weather this uh, next couple of days, but you never know. Yeah, that's right enough. My mate Tim's had them going at like 10 o'clock at night on off the surface in here. So you Is never it? know, but, um, you know, we'll see mm. what happens. Well, I'd like quite it. quite enough, Dave. You know, you look like some like sneaking about in the margins to be done, having a little look around. There's yeah. some like, opposite bank, there's very few swims. Um, very I've had a bowl around. I like, like, like the look of that weed over there, I must admit. Yeah, for sure. I've yeah, seen a couple in there. written but, all over, uh, isn't it? What are you thinking? You've had, you've had a walk up this bank and round this bottom end. Are you, uh, yeah. are you focusing on anywhere so far? What I do is, Dave, I'm going to pop up the other end there because there's a reed bed to my left and sort they of swim a that fair one. bit of yeah. bank on the yeah, other yeah, side yeah. there. Um, there's not enough wind here to worry about carp tearing about from one end to the other. So yeah. I'll fish off the barrow, see how we get on, keep my eyes open. Yeah, I think we'll do exactly the same. Fish and, off the barrow uh, today. I'm gonna I'm gonna walk over there, but my, my eyes won't get away from that weed over there. No, for sure. I've seen the fish poke his head out from the car park, so that's where I'm gonna be starting off, I think. Yeah, right now. We'll go from there. Have Game a curry on, mate. later and uh, have a lovely time, that's what it's all about, yeah, isn't it? For sure. Nice Best to have you here, mate. You're going that way, I'm going that way. Sweet ass, right. Well, see you in a bit. We'll do. Take on it. I said it was going to be entertaining that left hand rod. Five minutes. It didn't need to fish too close to the reeds, but I wanted to give myself a fighting chance because I had no idea it'd be quite cross when I took it. are out and it's looking better than good I would say um, just standing there deciding where I'm going to put my two rods and I had one fish go gosh just off that weed just to the right of it it's like right we'll explore that area did that not massively clean but you know getting a drop so that's had a stiff hinge rig put on it for that reason just because we're fishing over light weed and um, yeah just as I cast that left down rod about three rod lengths to the right of it, same distance out, another couple of fish rolled. So I was like, well, that'll do. And I found a really nice, clean, hard area amongst the weed out there. So I've uh, gone with the bottom bait on that rod for obvious reasons. So yeah, 
like any start of a session on a new water, you're sort of testing the water, I suppose, aren't you? So uh, that's what we're doing, hoping and praying that one of these rods will go eventually today. So uh, yeah, like I said, it's looking really good, really good. And um, it's supposed to be a bit sunnier today. I was hoping to get the, the fish going on the surface. I've just put some mixes out in the weed out there, but the seagulls have been straight on it. So, uh, you know, there might be something for a bit later on. My mate Tim who fishes here, he says that they uh, they like a floater at night time. So I'll certainly be giving it a go into the hours of darkness, maybe later on if it warms up a bit. But um, yeah, that's that's it about, about it at the moment. So Martin had one earlier. I think he's going to test the water down there and he might uh, he might have a little move later on depending on what he sees but um i've already set my bivy up i can't see these fish moving out of this weed bed so i'll, I'll be here for tonight definitely and um yeah we'll see what the day brings well we got that fish after just a couple of minutes uh, of casting out down the left hand reed bed here um all quiet since then Apart from there's been one or two jump out to the right, 35, 40 yards. So I've put the right hand rod on that now. No bait round it, just see how we get on for a little while. Because the, uh, the obvious plan was to, with the quiet margin opposite, be about 80 yards across there, was to um, bait that margin, I put a float out first, and then walk round to engage where it is, um, catapult the bait on top of it. And then... Uh, reel the float in, exchange that for the rig, and uh, pop it over there. It does seem to be, looks really carpy over there, but uh, with these fish jumping sort of close in out the front here, we'll uh, keep an eye on things, see what happens in uh, the next hour or so. Um, great conditions though, it's really nice. Not too hot, not too cold, and uh, it's one of them, uh, any second now it could happen. So we'll keep you posted. Possibly the simplest, <clears throat> one of the most effective rigs I've ever seen. I credit this to Adam Pennin. Um, he makes his a little bit neater than mine, but this does the job. Just with two quick release swivels, quick change swivels, and three six mil beads, this turns into the, one of the best presentations of a PVA bag I've ever seen. The beads, in the absence of a bead that grips on your mono, just simply, as you can see there, pierce them with a baiting needle at 90 degrees. So they do grip on there nicely. Obviously you wouldn't want to use this if you've got a leader or not up the line, but for um, mono fishing, it grips perfectly for safety. You know, if your line does break, they'll just pop straight off. Uh, the next stage is to clip on a short hook link, ever faithful top banana, hook link about four inches long. And then the best part of this, Adam's bit was, where are you gonna hang your hook link on? It is effectively a, a helicopter rig. You just tie the lead with a boom on it and the length of that part should be the length of the stocking mesh bag you're going to make up or thereabouts. Simple as that. You're then going to need, somewhere wherever I've got it, one I made earlier, a PVA bag and a stick needle and then from one end to the other straight through and the other side. That now goes on the bottom where your lead would normally go I'm not even going to stop it off because it isn't going to come off. What we're doing then is we adjust these beads up, nick the hook bait in the bag. There's no way it can possibly tangle or anything. What happens with this is the lead goes out first, really aerodynamic, and there's no, absolutely no disadvantage to fishing with that at all. It's absolutely perfect presentation to cast a PBA bag. It's caught me countless fish, so, uh, so I'll uh, credit Adams for that. Well done, mate. It's a nice one. Hello. Maybe. Well, that was a touch. I moved that rod that was out on those showing fish in front of me. I was happy with that. I thought I'd put it in that corner, left hand side. Five minutes. Not such a savage take as the first one. It feels a better fish than the first one. It's both takes in quick succession of casting out. So I think the old uh, regular recast won't be hurting us for sure. Yeah, rather than fishing on a bed of bait, just put the rod out and put three or four pouchfuls on it. Just enough to let them know there's something in the area there. Another one about the same size as the last one. 
a bit of weight on the line made it feel like it was a bit bigger, but either way, it's very good fun. Do number two. Well, another little one, but all good fun. And find your bigger brother. Well, number two. It's as simple as that, really. I put the rod out on the right hand side there. Saw a couple roll earlier. Not all that happy with that. I thought I'd better creep around the margin again. So I put it further in that corner, up down the left hand side. It was only there five minutes. So there's a few mooching around over there. So uh, hook point's fine. Hang a new pop up on. Put it back out there and see what happens. Nothing too critical there, just aim the general direction that corner where it's really quiet. Seen a few bubbles over there and say so the take came after about five minutes, so we'll see what else is out there. And if not, we'll have another little rechuck. Give it an hour. Sun is shining, weather is sweet. Isn't the weather is sweet or the weather is good? Bob Marley. Sun is shining. Weather is sweet, yeah. <laughs> Something like that. Sorry, right. Um, just sitting in the swim and I keep hearing them like plopping out down this way, so I'm way up. So I'm not thinking of changing anything drastic, but I'm just, you know, exploring an option B and maybe an option C, which you've got to do, haven't you? But I'm, uh, I'm very hesitant to keep thrashing it to a foam or do any recast, I want to really leave, leave them two baits soaking for at least the afternoon, but um, I'm only just down the way. But anyway, just having a little little mooch is another one. There's so many fish in this weed. But the sun's started to come out, and um, yeah, looking for any potential signs of them scooting around the surface, and maybe um, could be time to put some mixers out. I don't know, like I said, I put a pouch out earlier, but the seagull's got a straight on it. But I've got a bucket in the van, so if I need to feed them off, I will do. But yeah, just having a little mooch, seeing what's about. And uh, Martin's already had another one, another small one. But he can be on pest control up there, and I'll uh, I'll wait for a bigger one later on. Well, I'm not going to lie. I was sitting here thinking one of these rods should have gone, and. Uh, as I'm, as I'm in that next swim, this one's absolutely ramped off. <sighs> Looks like a good fish. These reels are a bit stiff, I don't know what's wrong with them. Come on, baby, let's have you. What is up with these reels? Stars anyway, Rob. Where are you, come here. Come on, boy, come on, boy, get in there. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, mate, these reels, what is wrong with them? The runner wheel's jammed on it, that's why it's struggling to pay line out. Come on, mate. Oh, I've got a bloody net here, look. Yeah, boy! Get in there, happy days. God, what is wrong with this reel? I think the runner's jammed up on it, you're saying? Well, the first one of a filming session is always a nice one to get under your belt. And, uh, God, my heart's still racing from that. <laughs> Literally just down in the next swim having a look and the receiver's just absolutely melted in my pocket. And, uh, yeah, after a dogged battle, we have a 22 pound mirror to show you. So, yeah. 
can't not be happy with him. A a deep pan kind of play mirror. But yeah, hopefully if we get amongst a few more of the fish in here, you'll see the, uh, the other strains of fish that they have in here because there's a right mixed bag, I tell you. Um, showing all the boys some pictures that I've been shown from this venue and uh, yeah, you name it, it's in here. So yeah, nice playing mirror to start off with. Um, that was on the right hand rod, the bottom bait. So to be honest, I'm probably going to put both of them bottom baits now, I think. So because that left hand rod was nearer to the fish and you know, you can't ignore the signs. So I think we're going to put both of them on the on bottom baits on that little D rig that I made up and hopefully get both of the rods going now. So uh, yeah, happy days. Well chuffed. Well, that was a busy old day, wasn't it? What was it like around your side? I've had a, I've had a great day. <laughs> I've enjoyed every few minute of it. There, a few round here, weren't there? Got off the mark in a couple of minutes. As soon as you rung me, you know, it's always stressful doing these films. Yeah, and uh, sure. you, you rung me, like I said earlier, in before <laughs> I put the line through the eyes. It's just, it's just a big relief, mate. Can't and yeah, you know. We don't mess about at this level, don't we? Can't, you know, <laughs> can't. But no, it's been a nice day. It's, uh, the rain's held off, so we've been able to, you know, fish without being cowed under a brolly or bivy yeah. all day long. Yeah. As you can see, you know, we've done a few, um, set a few rods up in this spot and uh, it ends up swimming like a bomb site. But all to be clear, no, we've had a good go on it, you know, and uh, had a couple of small ones there. Real good fun. It's excellent. So we come into the first evening now. Rods are out there, positioned. Um, the one on the far margin, I stuck to like plan A and plan 1A, I called it. Plan A down that margin where the reeds yeah. are. And the right hand rod, it looks so inviting, that so carpy that margin. I've put the float across there and uh, what I thought was about you know, 10 yards off the bank, because yeah. I don't think it needs to be all that close. When I went round there, I was surprised it was about 10 foot off the bank. Sure enough. Four and a half foot deep. Yeah, so I went round there, throwing the boat on top of it, all the way along. And also I positioned it where the tallest, is a little swim over there to throw the bait in from, but it's also the tallest bit of the horizon, so in yeah. the night, yeah, I so can line it all up pretty well, but I'll put the bait to the left and the right of it, so uh, as yeah, long as I'm nice. in the general vicinity and hit the clip, good to go. Happy days. Slightly, we'll different, slightly different this morning, but just uh, putting them where the fish are. Yeah, you've got a lovely wee bed around there, haven't you? <laughs> Mate. <laughs> they look like they're all There's over There's not it, as many fish in there was first thing this morning. Right. But it's like, it's a focal point, isn't it? Uh, yeah, it's like, it's the heart of the lake, that big wee bed, it's just so apparent. I mean, even, even without, the line is ready, isn't it? Even wind without wind. walking round, just standing in the car park looking yeah, at that, it's like sure. they're going to be in there. That carp like, alley, yeah. isn't it, between the weed bed and the And I'm not fishing bank. Quite very far out. Right. And, um, you know, boily fishing, nice easy fishing, isn't it? So yeah, lovely jubbly. Yeah, Tim's we're a little just saying that Biggins juice, so uh, be nice, wouldn't it? <laughs> <That's>, yeah. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah, if your name's on it, it's on it. We'll see what it's tomorrow not, brings. It's not, but as we say, we'll either catch them or we won't. Yeah. But we're well, giving I'm it sure a we best shot. I reckon there'll be at least another bite each before the morning. I think so, yeah. It's coming to that witching hour, but you know, early I was debating whether to have a move round or not because you get that time of the day when yeah. it's not really happening, yeah. and you get is the grass green on the other side? Yes, it is. But yeah. when you got round it, is it not? And then you've like got to play it all out in your mind, haven't you? Yeah. Talk the percentages out, and I'm happy sitting and doing what we're doing. Mm. If you yeah. hadn't any bites today, you're going to think about moving. You've had a couple of bites for sure. After pushing yeah. the swim, so you're going to yeah. stay, aren't you? Yeah, so. definitely. Yeah. So in a quiet time of the swim, you'd expect to be anyway. So yeah, yeah, it's all good to go. Cool. Well. We're going to have some dinner, chill out for the evening and um, 
hopefully have a fish to show you through the night, hopefully a better one. Yeah, nice, no idea, it? yeah, I should say. Best of luck, Dave. Game on. Nice one. After best laid plans on for the evening, as we always do, big oaks think we're going to be up all night caning them. Nothing happened. Didn't hear anything, see anything, or have reason to get up for anything. And no matter how many years you've been fishing, you wake up in the morning when you haven't had a take. <laughs> so uh, then you get the next dilemma as whether to have a recast or let it just sit there for a while. Um, just to let things lie and hope they're sneaking about there for that early morning take. But after what happened yesterday, I thought better of it. Um, both the fish I had were up really soon after a recast. And uh, then the other reason for having a recast was, well, if you just arrived on the lake at this time of day, you'd cast out and have no worries. So we've just done them both again. Seen a bit of bubbling in the corner. Um, yeah, prime time now, any second now. Come on. sat over in the swim having a cup of coffee and um, here and down this well from the original swim the left hand margin Kadoosh, Kadoosh. and um, it's sort of right around the corner and they were doing it yesterday as well so it's just like too many fish have showed in this area so I thought I'd come around and have a look and yeah they're fizzing up and definitely having a feed down there so it's um, stupid if I don't come around here and have a little go um, so yeah, I've reeled in over there and um, caught one round this corner where they've been fizzing up so it's worth a go for an hour isn't it? I think there's more activity going on in this corner than there is in front of my swim at the moment so he who dares wins hopefully. Giving it our best shot up here, despite looking really good any second now, Jobby, it hasn't happened. So it's time for a, a pack down, change of scenery, see if we can't uh, try and pull something out of the bag down the other end of the lake. Yeah, start putting this together. But, uh, back to fishing off the barrow down there, I'll just leave it so I've got the, uh, the basics I need sitting on top. I won't have to unpack this lot and uh, see what happens down there. Give it a few hours. Hopefully, we'll see something down the edges there's a lot more weed beds down there than there is at this end um, we can but try let's crack on and get down there see you in a minute rolling Rob yeah. <laughs> so we're just sitting here I was about to do a little piece of the camera about 
rigs and all that kind of stuff. And um, oh no! Well, it all seems a bit of an effort when you're loading the old barrel up, knowing you've only got a few hours left at uh, one end of the lake to come all the way around the other side of the lake to set your gear up again. But um, having sorted the barrel out so I can basically fish it off it without taking too much stuff off, all of a sudden it becomes really worth it now. And it's like a fresh start again. It's a lovely little swim. We've got where I had the margins and the reeds um, in the swim at the other end of the lake. This one, we've got a great big weed bed out here. Um, so I've put one on the edge of that and one I've just done and flicked down this margin here where you, there's probably about 80 or 100 yards where there's no swims here it's all overgrown there's no overhanging trees as such like the snag trees but it does look very carpy down there so yeah we'll give it a few hours here so it's a fresh start and uh, hopefully worth the effort see what happens let's just do a quick uh, rig talk bait application kind of thing so um yeah, gone in with a D-rig on both rods in the end. Yesterday I started off with the left-hand rod with a stiff hinge and um, the D-rig on the right-hand rod and that done a bite yesterday so decided to change it over to both rods. And um, yeah, as basic as it can be really. This is a, a rig that I've been using over at Frimley all year. Um, done me very well. It's sort of my bottom bait rig. Um, fluorocarbon, 20 pound fluorocarbon. Now a lot of people would say, oh, it's weedy and everything like that. You're not gonna be using a, a stiff boom, but um, if you get the right drop, like when I'm casting out there, I'm casting and casting, it might be a foot to the left, foot to the right. You know, you can feel if it's going into some light weed, you can feel it and then you can feel the nice donk. So as long as you're getting that nice donk, absolutely no reason why you can't be using something like that. Um, yeah, tuna amino bottom bait with one of our sweet corn pop-ups as a little sighter at the top of there. Um, just chopped in half. Helicopter set up, drop off system, just because of the weedy situation we've got going on out there. And um, yeah, it's just been boily fishing this trip. Um, something I haven't done for a while. I'm normally a bit of a particle spot out kind of man uh, with a lot of places that I fish. So the main reason for that, apart from local recommendations that they do like a boilie in here, this lake is absolutely stuffed full of rud and I mean big rud. So um, yeah, I've seen it before. You put in small particles or you chuck in some crumb boily down the edge the rudder just in there like piranhas and uh, you know they're going to be doing that exactly the same out in the pond so <clears throat> yeah a bit of both local knowledge telling me that uh, they like a boily in here and um yeah the the rudd obviously is a is a major factor with 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 the choice of uh, a bait that we're using so yeah that's pretty much it guys it's uh, it's done me uh, a bite and lost one so far so uh, hopefully there might be another bite before we go home. round because I'm uh, I need a hand with this one yeah because <laughs> he's massive looks like he's crossed though now he's gonna be jumping about <laughs> the smallest consolation prize for that thing that I lost earlier but there you go when the going gets tough one in the can yeah not right crawling right. up the rods even little ones like this put smiles in your face so uh, yeah we've only got a few hours left haven't we yeah we're only planning to do sort of how many hours well it's just 30. Over yeah, about probably that. about 30 in the end yep. so uh, a shorter trip than normal for us but um you've had Fun a couple anyway. yeah. i've had a couple everyone's happy though no it's been really pleasant really we've enjoyed it we've had a nice time and hopefully you guys have picked up a few um tips and tricks off martin i don't know about that but uh look, we've got a couple of hours down there just move swims again 
Third time lucky, just going to see if we can winkle out one at the very last knockings. That'd be nice. Well, happened on the last episode, mate, so uh, good happen again. Audio. Well done, Sweet mate. Sweet as. Cheers, Mark. Nice one. Well, no sooner as we just uh, put those little common back there, so stranger things have happened, we might get another one. I've gone back to the third swim, cast out, as soon as I put the indicator on, Dave's only got another one. It's a really good one this time, lovely way to end this video, um, just shy of 30 pounds, so let's go and have a look at it. Well done Dave. Well, seems like history repeats itself and lightning does strike twice. Same ending as the last video. I that rod ain't been back out for no more than 10 minutes and it's just ramped off again and um, it popped up in the margins and I must admit, I thought it was the big girl that's in it. <laughs> The way that it was fighting and the water it was turning and just the shape of it. If you know the big one in here, it's quite a similar looking fish. But um, yeah, just shy of 30 pound to finish off the uh, video with. And I will take that oh, any day of the week. Oi, oi, has he still got life in him? He fight like an absolute demon. <sighs> Wicked. So, so chuffed with that. I think it's because I was playing that little scamp before. It probably looked a lot bigger than it actually was, but um, 30 pounder a few months ago, must have been. Show the other side of him quick. Lovely starburst scales down towards the wrist of its tail. Yeah, worry about David. chunky it? mirror, but we're going to call that a wrap, I think, aren't we, Mark? Yeah, sure enough. Come in. Time to Let's get home, innit? Boys. Time to get on the M25 a bit earlier than I thought. Yeah, well, oh, come on. He's alright. Still cross, isn't he? Yeah, he's still cross, but. Um, yeah, thank you very much for joining me on this session. Always a pleasure, Mark. It's been an absolute oh. pleasure and a dry one this time, Dave. It dry always, for once. every time it goes, it's torrential <laughs> rain. Time for us. This time it. round, it's been dry. <laughs> yeah, it's been a real uh, thoroughly enjoyable session. Thanks to the camera boys as well for coming down. Great been, job uh, as always. Yeah. Big thank you to Tony, who runs Holly Fresh Lakes, for letting us come down and uh, sample your fantastic day ticket lake. And uh, yeah, we shall see you in the next episode. Thanks for watching.